Ladies and gentlemen, it's a fact of life that as video games become more graphically complicated, the VRAM requirements as well as memory requirements in general start to balloon. And Nvidia seems to be doing anything and everything they can to not need to add additional VRAM to their GPUs. Being serious for a moment, there is a fascinating article um, which has sprung up on WCCF Tech. I will leave a link to it in the video description. And this is actually pointing to a SIGGRAPH presentation which is going to be taking place early August. Now, of course, there will be a lot more details when uh, SIGGRAPH comes and goes, but what we understand about this paper is that we'll be looking at random access neural compression of material textures. Now, that sounds like a lot of words and doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but what it basically is is a new algorithm for texture compression. And what it essentially utilizes, unlike uh, some algorithms, is matrix multiplication. Now, what this basically means, in a nutshell, is that it can be accelerated across a large number of modern GPUs. Now, according to NVIDIA's claims, and we'll get more into the specifics in just a moment, NTC's algorithm is more practical and not only will reduce the memory requirements, for example, VRAM, and they've also had a recent blog post on sampler feedback, which we'll discuss in a second as well. But further to all of this, lower disk space requirements, because obviously the higher the quality of the textures, which typically take up a lot of space, well, especially if you've got a lot of them, well, obviously game installations start to balloon pretty quickly. So according to the claims of NVIDIA, the NTC is said to deliver four times the high resolution, that's 16 times more texels than block compression, also known as BC. Now, this this uh, algorithm bc is actually standard for a ton of uh, it's basically standard for a lot of gpu uh, based texture compression to my personal understanding so if i'm wrong please let me know in the comments i'd also like to quickly add a couple of quotes from nvidia themselves using this approach they say we enable low bit rate compression unlocking two additional levels of detail or 16 X more tech cells with similar storage requirements as commonly used texture compression techniques. In practical terms, this allows the viewer to get very close to an object before losing significant texture detail. And then they list a number of contributions, which again, you can see on screen. Now, of course, it will take a while for games developers to really start implementing this. That's if this technique ca uh, catches on, because obviously just because something is researched, it doesn't mean that it's not a more efficient way or just for whatever reason, developers decide just to not go with that direction but it is interesting and it also comes on the back of a very uh, intriguing post on nvidia's developer blog and this is not anything particularly new in terms of the basically reminding everyone that sampler feedback is a thing so that of course was introduced along with a host of other things with DirectX 12 ultimate now features like mesh shaders and ray tracing were not totally unheard of of course before DirectX 12 Ultimate launched indeed NVIDIA were um, actually supporting them with uh, Vulkan extensions initially but of course now DirectX 12 Ultimate has become synonymous with PC gaming Vulkan is doing a pretty good job as well though um, we all of course are waiting for sampler feedback and some of these other features to become more prevalent in games I will link the blog in the video description, but you can see a nice screenshot of it. It's going to be interesting when some of this stuff is, well, just more commonplace. Ultimately, Microsoft and, of course, these developers are working on it. It goes without saying that games development uh, cycles are, well, let's just say not short. So, obviously, it's not necessarily easy to just implement something last minute in many cases, especially if you've built, like, a whole system, you know, data streaming or whatever around a previous strategy. You can't just be like, eh, copy and paste. It doesn't necessarily work quite that easy. Anyway, let's switch over to AMD, shall we? Because, well, Lisa Su has been saying stuff. Now, naturally, one of the things that has become quite prevalent in the industry at the moment is chiplets. Uh, AMD are the ones who have embraced it perhaps the fastest. In fact, that's not even a question, that's a definite. But um, as we start to move towards 3NM, 2NM and so on, um, it is becoming, of course, increasingly difficult just to, you know, basically shrink things down. 
Um, so there's been a very interesting interview with Barons and uh, Lisa Sue, and she says that she doesn't actually think Moore's Law is necessarily dying, but what she does think is that it's slowed down in the traditional sense. So basically, back in the day, you know, when we had like the Pentium 3, Pentium 4s, you had like, you know, the older AMD in video cards. I don't want to say it wasn't difficult because that's not being accurate but it was a lot easier in the general sense to just say, well, we're moving from, let's say, a 40 NM process down to, hypothetically, a 28 NM process. But now, obviously, if things get smaller, energy tends to do stuff that uh, isn't ideal for chips. And naturally, you can do things to get away from that, and one of those is chiplets. Enough of me just rabbiting on. Let's say what Lisa has said. We've done different things to continue to get that performance and that energy efficiency. We've done chiplets, that's a big step. Now we've done 3D packaging. We think there are a number of other innovations as well. Software and algorithms are quite important. I think you need all of these pieces for us to continue to hit this performance trajectory that we've been on. And she also adds that, um, well, yeah, transistor costs and the amount of improvement we're getting from density and overall energy reduction is less with each generation. We're still moving forward generation to generation, and we're doing a lot of work with three nanometer today. And we're looking beyond that to two. But we'll continue to use these chiplets and type of constructions to get around challenges. Now, of course, it is worth noting that with Zen 5, to my personal understanding so far, we will see AMD basically employ a somewhat, um, what's the word? Two-prong strategy. That's the best way of putting it. Three NM will be for data center stuff. I'm simplifying things here. I've spoken about this a couple of times at length, but then you will have uh, four NM for desktop. Now, to my understanding, the desktop variants of Zen 5 Ryzen will top out at 16 cores, and it's going to be very interesting to see obviously how AMD continues to move forward. The data center is, of course, one of the more lucrative areas because ultimately they don't just want like a, you know, I forget even like they don't want like a 16 core or a 64 core or 128 core or like 256 core no 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 we're talking you know these data centers they don't just want one 256 core or even hypothetically although this is not exactly realistic right now like a 512 core processor they want like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these cpus so they'll buy obviously massive quantities massive volumes of 128 core cpus Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Um, I will be honest with you guys, it was supposed to be a PS5 Pro video today, um, as I've been, let's just say, in contact with a number of people, but I wasn't quite happy because I was getting some additional updates, to, um, and basically I just wanted to hold fire, get some more information from a few people before I publish anything. I'd rather, you know, be happy with something. There's a couple of other bits and pieces that I have also been working on, but to be very honest with you, the PS5 Pro thing has taken somewhat of a priority over the past few days. Hopefully, um, as long as something doesn't go kaboomski, uh, I think I'm relatively happy with the script, so that should be published Monday, so I should have a better understanding of stuff by then. But with that said, hopefully you will have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.